very good afternoon my dear students uh, today i am going to deliver a lecture on novel and particularly uh, the novel is the portrait of the artist as a young man by james joyce uh, this lecture uh, especially for ba 4 semester students paper 4.2 of gohati university so before discussing uh, portrait of the artist as a young man uh, as it is a novel let us discuss what is novel novel is a, is a word derived from italian novella it's a tale piece news and now it is applied in wide variety of writings whose only common attitude uh, common attribute is that they are extended piece of prose fiction but extended begs number of questions what 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 these extended begs uh, what is extended uh, is is the length of the novels varies greatly and there has been much uh, much uh, debate on how long a novel should be or what would be uh, it would be in reduction and absurdness of when in when when a novel or not a novel or it's a long or short or it's a short story uh, or as a short novel or as a novella uh, there is uh, there seem uh, to be uh, very uh, fewer and fewer rules uh, but it would be uh, contemporary in contemporary practice uh, probably there there is a agreed rule that in contemporary practice a novel will be uh, a novel uh, should be uh, within 60 to 70000 words or maybe it is say 2 lakhs uh, the actual term novel has had a variety of uh, meanings and implications too at different stages different levels from uh, Roughly the 16 to uh, let us come to the 16 to 18th century, its meaning tended to derive from the Italian novella and the Spanish novel, uh, the French term novule. Uh, this is also con uh, almost equally or uh, correspondent or very closely related. Closely related. So uh, uh, now let us let us uh, if we. Or discussing short stories or a tales of the kind uh, are kinds of uh, uh, what we, we find in Boccaccio's Decameron. Uh, and then Spain uh, was ahead of the rest of Europe in in the in the development of the novel. So uh, for because uh, what we have seen in Spain, the development of novel was taking taking place very beforehand. Uh, well, suppose the novels, uh, uh, there are different types of novels. There are fantasy novels, there are mythopoeic, there are historical novels. So, for example, Gulliver's Travels, which was written in 1726, Candide in 1759, uh, 59. These are, these are the novels what we, 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 we come across uh, when, we are li we're, when we are discussing English literature. And in modern century, in, in the in the 20th century, where we see one of the important, uh, very interesting novels uh, that comes to our mind, that is the portrait of the artist as a young man. This is a novel where a different techniques used. And what are the techniques is used in this novel? We are, we are going to discuss uh, very shortly. The, so, so the novel, this portrait of the artist as a young man, the novel, traces the intellectual and religio-philosophical awakening of a young Stephen Dedalus, a fictional alter-ego of Joyce and an allusion to Dedalus, uh, the consummate craftsmanship of Greek mythology. Stephen questions and rebels against the Catholic and Irish conventions under which he has grown and culminates with his self-exile from Ireland to Europe. Uh, the work uses the techniques that Joyce especially uh, developed more fully in Ulysses in 1922 and Finnegan's Wake in 1939. The portrait began life in 1903 as Stephen Hero, a projected 
yes, initially it was a 63 chapter autobiographical novel uh, in a realistic style. Uh, after uh, 25 chapters, Joyce abandoned Stephen Hero in 1907 and set to reworking its themes and protagonists into a condensed five chapter, five chapter novel. Dispensing with strict realism, making extensive use of free indirect speech that followed the reader to peer into Stephen's developing consciousness. Joyce makes use of extensive and convincing use of stream of consciousness, a stylistic form in which written prose seeks to represent the character stream of inner thoughts and perceptions rather than render these characters from an objective in an external perspective. This technique used in portrait of the artist as a young man. Mostly during the opening sections and in the chapter 5. Uh, sometimes makes for difficult reading with effort. However, the uh, seemingly jumbled perceptions of stream of consciousness can crystallize into a coherent and sophisticated portrayal of a character's experience, how the character is growing, how their development take, taking place, what was oh, from childhood to younghood to adulthood, what is his different uh, experiences in different categories, different parts of his life, what is his inner development. Uh, after another stylistic techniques for which Joyce is noted is the is the is the technique uh, epiphany. So what is epiphany? It's a moment in which a character makes a sudden profound realization, whether prompted by an external objection or a voice from within or a voice from within that creates a change in his or her perceptions towards the world, perceptions of the world. Joyce uses epiphany most notably in the Bliners. But a portrait of the artist as a young man is full of these sudden moments of spiritual revelation as well. Most, most notable is a scene in which Stephen sees a young girl wedding at the beach which strikes him with the sudden realization that an appreciation for beauty And that can be, that can be truly good. This moment is a classic example of Joyce's belief that an epiphany dramatically altered the human spirit in a matter of just a few seconds. So, uh, further, if we are discussing the stream of consciousness, what we, we, we what our students should understand that it's a, it's a technique, it's a person's thought and conscious conscious reactions to the events perceived as a continuous flow. The term was introduced by William Jones in his Principles of Psychology in 1890. It's a literary style in which the character's thoughts, feelings and reactions are depicted in a continuous flow, uninterrupted by objective descriptions or conventional dialogue. So earlier the novels where we found it's a conventional description of a story line that is going on, that is happening, a hero goes somewhere, he has uh, developing his insights and he's, he's spending his time uh, with a relation. So these are the ex certain examples or in certain historical kind of novel there is expression of the heroic deeds, what the hero is doing. But in this novel, the use of stream of consciousness technique, it is only the the continuous flow of the character's thoughts, character's feelings and reactions as depicted in a continuous flow uninterrupted by objective descriptions or conventional dialogue. Jam Joyce, Virginia Woolf and Marcel Proust are among its notable uh, early exponents of this technique. So my dear students, you please go through this stream of consciousness technique, what it is and how it is implied in the novel, the portrait of the artist as a young man with the development of the character Stephen Dedalus, his 
childhood days his uh, his younghood his school education his 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 scene his realization his proper his uh, his expression in in front of the altar in a, in a church all everything is is described in a in a detailed way without a continuous with an uninterrupted uh, descriptions of a con uh, different from the conventional style so thank you thank you very much